The biggest key to my success has been very simple, but deeper in meaning. It has always been think big. Big for me and my mental preparation has always been defined as becoming incredibly great. Hello everyone. Thank you for tuning to my channel, Cornelius Wortham, The Mental Air. I am Cornelius Wortham. Thank you so much for tuning in each week, each week, um, and, so, and giving your support, um, The Mental Air channel. Um, as you can tell by the title, it's another intriguing title. Um, because as we know on this journey to success, we know that success is continual, which means that success is never on, it's just merely rent. And that rent is due every single day. And so I thank you all for tuning in to Cornelius Worked on the, the Mental Air um, as we provide you with mental coins each week. Um, as you see in the title, it says passenger slash backseat drivers. Wow. <laughs> yes, we're talking about passenger slash backseat drivers. Uh, for short, I like to call them PBSD. That's, that's the mental term. That's the mental term. You know, when you go to the doctor, they sometimes give you the medically term or, of situation. But I'm giving you the mental term. It is PBSD. So anytime that you hear me talk about PBSD, I'm simply talking about passenger slash backseat drivers. And in our life, we all have encountered passenger slash backseat drivers. Um, as you know, is that these individuals love to get into our vehicles. Um, and begin to bark out orders, not from the driver's seat, but always from that passenger slash rear seat, back seat. Uh, whether you call it a rear seat or a back seat is that they love giving that orders. And what happens is, is that when you're on your commute with these individuals is that if you are going too fast is that they seem to remind you that you need to slow that vehicle down. Vice versa. If you were moving slowly, they always say that you need to speed up. Um, and you also know that they always have, they always seem to see things that they think that you don't see. Is that they always be, hey, you see the car in front? That car is braking. Hey, that's a stop sign. Hey, the light is red. Hey, the light is yellow. Hey, the light is green. Is that we always have that. And so sometimes that it begins to make us very frustrated in our drive and our commute. But the most fascinating thing about this is that when we begin to drive and they become very annoying of barking those commands and instructions to us, is that we all have been there before and we always ask them this simple question. Would you like to drive? It would, the consensus answer always be absolutely not. And that's why it's very important that we understand passenger slash backseat drivers, is that we have these peoples in our life also mentally, is that they come into our life and they always want to give us orders on how they feel that our life and our journey should go, is that when you're applying for schools, is that they feel that you should go to this university, or you should go to this junior college, or you should go to this business school, everything, or you should not have these type of friends, or you should surround yourself around this person. Or you should buy this car, you should buy this house, and different things on our job, or you should do this project first. Is that we always have these people that always want to drive our life. Is that when you simple ask them the question, would you would like to drive, the answer is always going to be absolutely not. Is that I'm not saying that we should not always listen to a passenger slash backseat drivers, because realistically, is that me as a, a motivational and in, an inspirational speaker is that to a level I am a passionate uh, slash backseat driver in your life is that but I'm doing is just simply trying to give you that spark and we all know is that in our daily life we can always tolerate passionate slash backseat driver for a short period in space um, be, before they become very annoying. Um, and one of the things is, is that once you begin to always listen to the passenger and backseat drivers, is that you lose the ability to be able to focus and drive and concentrate on your drive and your journey and your destination. 
is that you then become dependent upon their opinions. You become dependent, um, um, you become independent of being of your own ideas and you always dependent upon what they say or do and have you to do on your journey. Um, and then you always want to look for them for validation. Is that one of the clearest um, validation of uh, movies that I ever encountered was The Wizard of Oz. If you have not seen The Wizard of Oz, it is a great inspiration and motivational movie. Is that every time that I watch a movie, my wife always talk about Cornelius just enjoy the movie. Is that a lot of times that I'm always looking for deeper meaning. I'm always looking for some type of drive to help me on my journey. And this movie actually is very great in wisdom and is very uh, great in inspiring you to do better. The one of the things, if you have not seen it, is that the world of YouTube, Google, and videos is a great way that you can be able to get clips and piece things together what I'm about to talk about. And so what I'm going to do is give you a synopsis of the movie. Is that what do you have? You have four individuals. You have Dorothy, you have Scarecrow, you have the Tin Man, and you also have the Scary Lion. Is that they all have this motivation of following the yellow brick road, going to the wizard. Because someone in their life have told them, a passenger, <laughs> backseat driver, that you need to be able to see the wizard to obtain anything you need to get where you're going. And so what happens is, is that Dorothy is approached first, is that she is told is that in order to get to what she needed to get, is that she had a challenging situation, is that she needed to get home. And so what came into her mental deposit was is that she needed to be able to see the wizard to help her to get home. And how to get home is that the destination journey was to follow the yellow big road to be able to see the wizard. On her drive down the yellow big road is that she was able to encounter the scarecrow. Now the scarecrow is that he had an issue as well. Is that people had mentally deposited into his mental bank and that he did not have a brain. <laughs> yes, that he did not have a brain. And so when Dorothy immediately seen his issue is that she had a great idea for him. She said, won't you come on this journey down the yellow brick road to see the wizard and he will be able to give you a brain. So now we have two individuals on the same path and the same road, but they're having two different issues and challenges. And so, but they had one motivation to go is that they want to see the wizard to be able to help out their situation. So on this journey is that they, then they met the Tin Man. Is that the Tin Man was all rusty. He had been out in the rain. Um, he uh, didn't have any movement. And so they did one great thing before he was able to get on the yellow brick road. Is that we had talked about in the last video is talk about having a gross work and not a net work. Meaning that we always want to surround ourselves with people that are able to pour into us. Whether it's professionally, whether it's mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally. We want people to be able to pour into us. And so then we start beginning a gross work. Is that in this, in this time is that Dorothy and the Scarecrow, they began to build that gross work. And the one thing that they did with the Tin Man is they began to oil oh, him. They began to pour oil on him. They began to pour on him, pour oil on him. They, they began to speak restoration on him. Is that he was able then to move his joints and to be able to get on the yellow brick road. Now, he had an issue and a challenge. The challenge was is that people had poured in him mentally from the back seat and the passenger side and said that he didn't have a heart, meaning that he was unable to have compassion for people, love for people, meaning that he could not respect people, that he didn't have feelings, that he didn't have emotion. And so people had told him that he was heartless. So he joined the game to go down the yellow brick road because he needed to see the wizard. And he was told by Dorothy and the Scarecrow that the wizard would be able to give him a heart. And as they move down the road, is that they, e they end up finding the cowardly lion. Is that they found someone that, in his mental bank, is that people have told him that he was a coward, that he didn't have courage. 
is that one of the things that we know about lions that lions are the king of the jungle and you think about it is that they are made and they are vicious they are made to be vicious is that they're the top of the food chain is that a lion has this great roar but the problem is is that they didn't people had poured into him and said that he lacked those skills of being a real lion and so that hurt and you know a lot of us have seen that in our life people have poured into us and said that we didn't have those skill set to be what we needed to be in a certain situation and so at that point is that he joined the game to go to the wizard and see the wizard of Oz because he was told by Dorothy the Scarecrow and the Tin Man that he needed to see the wizard and whatever he needed that the wizard be able to get that and so as we move into the story is that these individuals, these four individuals, was able to see the wizard. And so when upon seeing the wizard, the wizard did one of the greatest acts in movies. It that what he did is that instead of taking credit for himself and being able to say, well, I did this, I said this, or you know, a lot of times people take credit for our success. Is that they'll say, well, you know what? I gave Cornelius that idea to do that. I gave Cornelius the skill set to do this. I gave this. It always you hear a person say, I, I. And we know that it's no I in, the I is only in win, but it's no I in team. Because team means together everyone achieves more. And on this yellow brick road is that you had four individuals that had the mindset is that they wanted to see the wizard because the wizard possessed something that they needed. Um, and so what happened is, is that the wizard did something very symbolic. Is that with the scarecrow is that he simply gave him a diploma. When he gave him the diploma, the scarecrow immediately started calling all these mathematic equations, solving things. He knew everything. But the paper did not make him smart. Is that the wizard only, only thing the wizard did was pour, pour it into him. And gave him the ability to understand that whatever he had, it already lied within the construct of his own self. Then when he moved on to the Tin Man, it they gave him a clock shaped as a heart. And once he put it around him, is that he immediately had emotions and immediately had feelings. But think about it. It was just a clock. He had already had these skills. He already had the emotion that lied within his own construct. And when it came to the lion, it that he gave him a medal. And when he gave him the medal, it that he is zoo in courage. You have to understand is that a lot of things that we are acquiring and we're looking for validation, it always it always rely lie in our own construct. Now think about this. Now Dorothy, her issue was is that she needed to get home. And so in getting home is that in the beginning of the movie is that they gave her some slippers. They gave her some red slippers. And she walked with this, these slippers all along the way when she was able to see the scarecrow, then the, then the tin man, and then the lion. The thing is, is that she already had with her what she needed to get home. All she needed to do at any time is to click her heels together and say, there's no place like home. There's no place like home. The one of the things that you have to understand is that sometimes our journey is that we already have what we need to get home and get what we need to be, but sometimes that our journey takes us to these different points in our life to be able to get someone from point A to point B to point C and point D to get where they need to be in life. Is that this journey of success doesn't always embody you. Is that sometimes the easiest thing to myself is just to say, you know what, Cronez, I'm just going to click my heels and say it's no place like home and I'm going home. Not knowing that it is three individuals on the road that's needing help, needing somebody to pour into them as well. Is that we have to learn that we have to always understand when it is, when it is a great time to listen to passenger slash backseat drive. Is that a lot of times in our life is that they can mean good, but sometimes is that they don't have our, our, our great, they do not have our great interests. 
And the reason why I say that is that is that growing up, sometimes when you were kids and you were a teenager, the biggest thing when I came from, from that small town I always talk about, Calhoun City, Mississippi, is always dear to me. Why? Because the way you see me now is that everybody from Calhoun City, Mississippi have poured into my success. And they continue to pour into my success. Is that it's a, it's a small town, but we do big things. Is that you have to understand where I'm from is that we used to like joyride. And joyriding is that you just put gas in a car and you do absolutely nothing. You just go here and there. And a lot of times we do have our passenger slash backseat driver. Is that what they'll say? Hey, Cornelius, let's go here. Let's go here. Let's go there. Let's go this place and that. But we don't have no distinct place and no distinct destination. Is that we're out just joyriding. And what you have to understand is that you have to distinguish between if your backseat passengers Back your passengers and backseat drivers have you out joy ride or y'all have a Pacific destination. You have to understand that when Dorothy met them is that she had a Pacific destination. Is that they was trying to get to the odds to get what they need to do. Is that a lot of times in our life all we're doing is just joy riding. We don't have no distinct destination. Well, all we're doing is grasping the things that we see on the road. Is that we don't become laser focused. Is that we see a mall here. We see a food, a restaurant place there. Hey, we say, hey, let's stop. Let's stop at the flea market. Let's stop it here. But we don't have that clear destination. And what happens is, is that when you don't have that clear destination, you start losing time. You lose time, and effort, and focus. And you become tired on the journey. Do you hear that? You had just received your direct deposit. Is that all I'm asking you to do is to always be weary of passionate slash backseat driving. Is that what we would like you to do is that gain control of the wheel. Is that you have to understand is that we only can take passionate slash backseat drivers for a short time and period. So always remember, determination today equals success tomorrow.